guys to AFO 2022. I am here with the wonderful, the person, really, you don't need any introduction, but I'm going to introduce you anyway. This oh, is, me? Yes, you. <laughs> this is John Swayze. This this person right here? Hey, everybody. How you doing? It's your old pal, John Swayze. How's it coming for you? Well, uh, we just got in today. I say we. My daughter, Olivia, is here, um, another voice actor, and um, we flew in this morning and uh, had to wait a while for our bag, so by the time we had to run a quick errand. We got to the con, got checked in, immediately kind of jumped into things, uh, had a quick bite. But um, uh, so far, it's been great. The only hiccup is uh, uh, we're sharing a room because she's my daughter. It's no big deal. But um, we do have to have two beds, and apparently we only have one. So uh, <laughs> right after this interview, I've got to go get my room situated because um, we're not from West Virginia. So, yeah. Goodness. I'm sorry about the room. Just kidding about that, West Virginia. We love you. Oh, no. <laughs> you know. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate Certainly. it. Certainly. First is that, you know, we're, we're just coming or we're still in a global panoramic panini, whatever people call it these days. Mm -hmm. I and love paninis. Love paninis. And I know a lot of people just had different experiences during the, like, the very height of COVID during lockdown. Mm -hmm. What was that for you, like, work-life-wise uh, during the height of COVID? You know, uh, for me, it was... Uh, great i mean i watched tiger king like everybody else and that really um you know that first uh two weeks or whatever where it was literally locked down where you just didn't leave uh the weather in houston where i'm from happened to be glorious and we had a we have this we've moved since then but we had this beautiful patio deck and we had a tv out on it and a little living room set up and we could cook and do the dishes all that so we just stayed outside almost the entire time you know and um, it was so much fun, but uh, work-wise, you know, of course, the studios all shut down for a period, um, and uh, I was, you know, fortunate to get some PPP money for being self-employed and whatnot. But um, at Sentai, where I work um, in Houston, we uh, within, I want to say, with less than a month, we were back at remote recording, and then within about three months we were actually back in the studio we had uh come up with some safety protocols uh you know everyone masked up um changing equipment out between each session uh vaporizing the room uh, sanitizing the room with you know and uh then actors wouldn't come you know a lot of times actors all show up at the same time to work with we spaced them all out so very minimal staff and everything but anyway so we were we were back at it pretty quick. Um, and then, of course, Funimation, they started doing remote recording as well. And, um, you know, just like the rest of the world, the pandemic hits. You still got to make a living. I mean, you still got to. I mean, people need their anime. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's no it question. Definitely so, got me through. Yeah. And I. Good portion. And, 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 and there's, a, there's kind of a, 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 not a rumor, but just a, a feeling uh, that one reason now conventions are so popular. Because, you know, they're. People are like, oh, man, I hope we bounce back from pre-COVID. It's like, dude, every convention I've been to since then has been off the chart busy. And it's for two reasons. One, they're back. People are clamoring to go. But two, during the pandemic, I think like half the country watched anime, apparently. And now they're all like, I got to go to these conventions. I mean, it's just, it's really amazing. So, you know, for me, everything kind of worked out all well. Uh, I know that on, additionally in regards to like anime, uh, another thing that really like popped up over the pandemic was social media. Like a lot of voice actors end up popping on TikTok or other social platforms. Mm -hmm. Has Have you made the switch over to TikTok or how has that been for you? You know, I'm old. Um, I, I asked my son one time, I said, you know, there needs to be a term for someone or something. Like when you get to a certain point, no matter who you are, and you just go, that's enough technology for me. I don't need another platform to communicate with. I don't need my watch to do something different. You know, I just don't need any more technology. And my son goes, oh, there's a word for that, Dad. Boomer. Okay, boomer, okay, boomer, okay, boomer, okay, boomer, okay. <laughs> so uh, being a boomer, uh, I was like, I think you're offending me. I'm not <laughs> sure, but I... I was too stupid to know because I'm a boomer. But um, uh, 
I did not really. I I do have a TikTok account. I I have banned Twitter from my life. I think Twitter is evil. Yes. And I will never ever get a twit again. Yeah. And I they I had some problem. I mean, just the Twitter people are like just bottom feeders, and I just I'm sorry. And I don't. I like West Virginia. I'm not taking that Twitter comment back. I I hate Twitter. Hate it. But I love Instagram. I love Facebook. Uh, again, being older, Facebook's good. So I like to do things. I like to, um, you know, get on there and make little short videos and stuff like that. Hello, this is the voice of All for One. And I'm the voice of Lord Death, and I'm the voice of the Undertaker, and I'm the voice of Hohenheim, and I'm the voice of Crocodile. But my actual voice sounds like this. Um, hang on a second. This, is, this could be exciting. Yeah. Let's see. Hang on. Hang on. It's my wife. I will not answer that. Emotional damage. Okay. Uh, <laughs> God, I hope she doesn't see this video. But anyway, so yeah, I like to do some TikTok stuff and stuff like that. Uh, I made a, a video uh, earlier today that I just posted on Instagram. I met this guy named Matthew Swayze. And he spells it just like I do. <laughs> hey, hey, everybody, this is your old pal John Swayze. And I'm at AFO in uh, Orlando. And this is amazing. I got to show you all something. You know, every now and then you meet somebody that's like really special and really cool, you know, and it sticks with you. So I'm sitting here and this guy walks up. Say hello, Matthew. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. We don't know if we're related or not. <laughs> Although his dad's name is John. <laughs> and his dad is named John. And I was like, who's your mom? <laughs> so I was, uh, anyway, so I made a little video about that and, uh, last weekend. I, so I like to do them occasionally, but, you know, I'm not a, don't spend all day doing it. Definitely not a TikTok. Got it. I tried it and I just couldn't get the hang of it. I just don't have the bandwidth. I'd rather sit around, drink a beer, and watch TV. Oh, totally. I should make a TikTok about that, maybe. That'd be. The ad Listen, you got my life already. <laughs> Speaking of kind of like getting tired of things, you again, your your portfolio is extensive, um, and you voiced a lot of characters. You've done a lot of work in anime. Has there been anything that you know that you've been requested over the years, or just characters that you just kind of get tired of doing, or kind of? hear people asking you to do stuff with? Uh, absolutely not. I, I, you know, we get asked a lot, do you get tired of being typecast? Do you get tired of being this, blah, blah, blah. No, I never get tired of being cast. <laughs> um, okay. And, you know, really for me, uh, the more that I do, the more relevant I remain. Mm -hmm. You know, um, right now, of course, the big, uh, big thing is uh, all for one with my hero. Right. Um, but, you know, I, I, and at my table today and, and every convention I've been to and I'm doing like I'm doing like 46 conventions this year wow, okay. yeah it's most I've ever done in my life I'll probably never do this many again it's a whole it's a I may maybe next year but anyway <laughs> um the uh uh I'm still people people still love Lord Death from Soul Leader they love Undertaker from Black Butler they love you know so I, I feel very blessed and very fortunate uh having done this for 26 years and counting um, that I've just you know I was in the right place at the right time and got to do a lot of really iconic characters mm -hmm. and I've also played a lot of soldier B's and a <laughs> lot of pedestrian A and man 1A which we came up with you know man 1A that's funny we should actually just call him man 1A <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it sounds, my yeah. name is man 1A it just kind of has a I don't know Caribbean feel to it but <laughs> anyway so I there's no characters that I get tired of um, at all okay uh, speaking of projects, are there any characters that you've seen that you kind of gravitate towards when offered an opportunity? What do you mean? Uh, as in, like, were there any characters, especially because, like I mentioned, you have such a extensive list. Oh, is there oh anything, I see. Yeah, like, yeah. Is there anybody that, like, when you hear, when you read the script or when someone offers you a role, they're like, yeah, I've got to do that character. So I play a lot of dads and a lot of bad guys, and yes. sometimes they're the same guy. <laughs> so, um, uh, and in my uh, career, I've been very fortunate to play a lot of characters but 
uh, as I've gotten older and more actors have come into the fold of, of doing this, they're not requiring, or not requiring, they're not calling on us, I say us collectively older actors, that in the past would do a ton of different characters for a show. Because mm -hmm. they just didn't have as many actors to pull from. But now there's so many actors doing this, it's like, okay, John, this is what you do really well. That's what we're going to call you to do, you know, a, a Hohenheim, a, a, a all for one, something that's down here like this, you know. And, and, or, but they know I can do some character stuff, so, you know, I do get called to do those older guys. I can't, you know, I would never get called to do the the young male trope of an anime, you know, 16-year-old <laughs> right. high school boy. Right. It's like... It can't sound like that, you know, just no matter how hard I try, so um, it would have to be like a character that had some sort of speech defectiveness, <laughs> like, hi, my name is John, I'm 16. <laughs> I don't know why that tickled me. I don't know, but it actually would be kind of funny to see. It would be. I actually, I would watch and it. I, and I, this little little sidebar, but I, mm. I love doing stuff like that. In fact, tonight, uh, or no, tomorrow night, excuse me, at <laughs> AFO. Uh, we're going to be, I'm going to be screening a movie that we did uh, back in Texas called Lake Texarkana Gamera. And Gamera, this is Gamera 2, but we recorded it for the Japanese licensor. Um, uh, we recorded and dubbed the movie like it should be. But then as a joke, uh, and they turned out they loved it, they said do the whole movie. We dubbed the whole thing as a bunch of rednecks. <laughs> Yes. And so I love doing stuff like that. Uh, you know, I've got another animated movie that I was hoping to show, but it, I, I couldn't put it together. But uh, it, it's, I, I love, we have a lot of projects I do on my own and stuff like that. Fun, but That's making fun with audio is always good. Time. That's super exciting. Speaking of like your work outside of voice acting, you've actually done quite a bit outside of voice acting. You've done voice directing for some, just for people who are not familiar with some of the shows he's worked on. Uh, you did voice directing for Air Gear, Saint Seiya, Madoka Box. You did some script writing for Innocent Venus, uh, Janiki Extend. Um, for you speak, uh, getting all these staff roles, was this kind of like a natural progression from voice acting, or was this kind of like something that you always wanted to step into? No, so I, I've been an actor my whole life. Um, I started off doing film and television, theater, that kind of stuff, just like a lot of my uh, compatriots and cohorts whatever that other word is, it says the word friends and equals. Right. Um, but anyway, um, uh, I was working for fun, or excuse me, for Funimation and Sentai, but uh, I was really, it came out of a, I need to have more full-time work. Yeah. And I could either go get a job waiting tables or I could apply to be a director at Sentai, which I did. And I was a contractor there for years, uh, you know, doing working for six months and then okay they're out of shows for a while and they let me go and then two months later they call me back for another two months and then let me go and then call me back and you know so uh and really when it when it when it says writing and directing uh it's mainly the directing um but sometimes as the director you have to really retweak the scripts so if you do enough of it you get the right to call yourself a writer okay. uh, i have written some shows um, but mainly the ones that I direct. Uh, but anyway, it, it wasn't so much as that's what I'd like to really get into. It was more out of a necessity. I wanted to make more money. <laughs> and uh, there's just more work on that side of the microphone than on the other side. Okay. And now I'm a full-time employee of Sentai, which is now part of AMC Network. So I guess I'm an employee of AMC Network. So. Hey, that's actually I just want to meet The Walking Dead. That's all I want to do. <laughs> Same, same. And better call Saul. Um, so moving out of the stuff that we all kind of know, everyone asks all the questions, you know, how'd you get into voice acting, all that good stuff. Um, but honestly, I'd like to know what are some, what are some of your passions outside of voice acting and voice directing and things of that nature? So I love to play guitar. Uh, I have a wife and three kids. Like I said, Olivia's here. She's 22. She's graduated from UH, go Cougs. And, uh, uh, I have a son, Joshua, who's 18, who's going to Texas A&M, Giga Maggie's. And uh, he's going to study marine biology, which is what I wanted to do before I decided to become an actor. So I've got one kid that's an actor and one that's going to be a marine biologist. And then I've got a younger daughter, Tara, who's 15. I have no idea what she wants to do. So <laughs> anyway. But uh, I uh, wrote a children's book called uh, Zeke Gets Glasses. And uh, I'm in 
talks right now to hopefully get it uh, produced into a children's animation. So um, that would be something that I would really love to do, and then get it pitched, and then maybe get it picked up to do a whole series. So oh, that nice. would be that would be spectacular. Yeah, that's actually really really cool. I don't think a lot of people would know that. And I love guitar. I love the Grateful Dead. Oh, Here, Grateful Dead there. Look at that Phantom air. Bears. Yeah. Hey. So I uh, love that, and then um, I like to drink beer and whiskey and barbecue. I don't drink barbecue. That's weird. <laughs> I like to eat barbecue and pho. Feed me nice. beef noodles. Is my favorite. Absolutely. I actually really like pho and udon as well. Um, and last couple of questions here. Uh, are you a cat or dog person? Dog. Easy. She told you. Have my camera person. She's at, she had to ask everybody. That's okay. That's a great question. Uh, we we put had to put we had a Walker Coonhound for about six years. We found him at the SPCA, and his name was Tybalt from Shakespeare. And we, when we found Tybalt, it was already named Tybalt. So we were a big theater family, and we were just like, well, that's the dog. It's got to be the dog. Yes. He was beautiful. Grew up to be a beautiful, beautiful Walker Coon now, black and white, um, and just gorgeous. And unfortunately, developed a brain tumor. We had to so we were dogless for about four months, and... Uh, about two weeks ago, I was at a convention in Memphis, Anime Blues Con. And my wife texted me on Friday and said, so somebody brought over a boxer. He's beautiful. They found him on the street. And they have he has a chip, and the people that own him don't want it. I'm like, all right. And also, some other friends brought over a beautiful chocolate lab they just found. And he is chip, but no information on the chip. Both males, both well endowed with not been snipped yet, so they're all ready to go. <laughs> and uh, I was gone the whole weekend. When I got home, they were gorgeous dogs. They are gorgeous dogs. And we were talking about keeping them both, but they weren't really getting along. Mm. I mean, two males, you know. So, um, anyway, on Tuesday, the uh, owner of the lab. I mean, this was a gorgeous lab, and I knew I knew we weren't going to get to keep it. It was like a three thousand dollar dog. I mean, this was like bona fide, you know, AKC registered, all that. So we had to give that dog back. So we kept the boxer, and uh, his name is Topper from uh, Outer Banks. If you watched Outer Banks, but, yes. yeah, I hated that show. And, uh, <laughs> I'd always make fun of my kids going. So I'd always go, "Where's Topper? Where's Topper? Is Topper okay?" And they're like, Dad, did you shut up? And I'm just like, only if Topper tells me. You know? <laughs> so anyway, uh, we came, came up with the name. It's like, how about Topper? And they're like, oh my God, that's hilarious. You know, so we we'll But anyway, so now we have this beautiful boxer. And uh, his name is Topper. Oh, and he has a box. <laughs> and their bottom one is not Topper. Oh, no. <laughs> You're hilarious. I'm sorry. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it close. First off, thank you so much for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me, and I wish you and your audience all the best. Absolutely. And just for people who want to follow you, I know you don't have a lot of social media. Where can we find if you want to follow you? The best thing to do is follow me on Instagram or Facebook, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, I don't know what my handles are, but my name is John Swayze. Unless you find the other John Swayze that lives <laughs> in Virginia, that's the father of what I thought was my son. Uh, no, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm easy to find. I'm in the, in the Facebook. Um, like I, I told somebody earlier, I am not, like, secretive about how to get all. People are like, how'd they get your number? I'm like, really? <laughs> how do they get my number? It's on the internet. Right. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Why would you post it on your website? It's everywhere. <laughs> I, you know, it's not that hard right. to find. Uh, so, anyway. Anyway, but thank you so much. Yeah. It's been delightful. You're, uh, I love your earrings, first oh, of all. Oh, thank you. I got them just for this.